In the last video, we were out in the field getting some posts set in the ground, and today I'm gonna be in the shop and in the field as I get some more pieces built and installed. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. First thing that we'll probably do is the hinge for this gate. If you notice uh, this gate that I've got sitting on the stand here, on the one side I I did a mitered joint here, 45 or two 45s to make a 90, I should say, and that way it plugs up all my holes on the end. I won't have anywhere where wasps might make a home. On the other end of the gate. You can see I've done something different here. There's a specific reason why I did that. This end with the open hole is gonna be the hinge side. And this hole is actually kind of part of the hinge. So basically what I'll do is I'll make a little weld on stub shaft that can stick up into this hole. And then on the top, I'll have another stub shaft that bolts to that post so that this gate will be removable but those two shafts together act as a hinge. I know that's probably not making a lot of sense, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Using scrap pieces, I'm just gonna to try to show you what I mean. So when I was talking about a stub shaft, let's just say in this example that that is this, and then I'll have a plate here. If we weld these together, this end would be welded to the post, and now this is gonna act as a hinge. The bottom of my hinge is gonna start from this piece, and the first thing that I need to do is drill a two inch hole in this, I think this is half inch thick uh, flat bar. This is gonna take a while because my hole saw is not real sharp and my drill press is not real strong, but to me, this is the right way to do it, so it's it's worth taking the extra time. My friend's dad gave me this drill press when I was just out of high school, and I think even then it was it was kind of on the weaker side. It's it's actually a pretty good drill press. I think just the motor is kind of going out on it, and it's one of those things that you know you don't really think about it until you're using it and you realize that the motor's going out and it and it has trouble doing some of the things that you need it to do. I'm gonna be here for a while. Well, finally, I got that big two inch hole drilled in this piece of flat bar here. It's pretty well centered, I would say. Uh, good enough for what I need. So the next step, I'm actually, I'm gonna trim up some of the corners here. I wanna kinda round this as best as I can. And then I'm gonna use that hole to weld in my shaft. Mostly I'm just wanting to get rid of any sharp corners um, because this will kind of be down like where the cow's legs or feet might be while they're walking and I just don't want them to, to catch a sharp corner and cut themselves. All right, so if you haven't been able to kind of figure out what we're doing here, this is gonna be the bottom of our hinge. You can see I've got this side kind of cleaned up with the grinder. This side is still raw. I'm gonna set it down on top of this flat piece of channel iron and then this stub shaft, as I call it, is just gonna fit right in here and then we're just gonna weld the bottom. I beveled the edge of the stub shaft here so we have a little bit more surface area on the weld. What I wanna do here is, is stick this up with the magnet, get it all straight, and then flip this over and weld it on the bottom. So I'm trying to avoid putting any weld on the top here. And the reason for that is that that's where the gate is going to be pivoting. So if you have weld here, then it makes a rough surface and the gate's not gonna be uh, moving too smoothly.
All right, it's the next day now, and we're back on this project here in the shop. I've got this hinge that I was working on yesterday. We're gonna finalize this. I need to gusset it a little bit and get that all done. I need to finish the top part of the hinge so that we'll actually have something that we can attach to the post and hang the gate on. The main goal is to get this gate hung up because I need to move cows like this afternoon, and I need this gate in place in order to do that. So. If we have to hang the gate with no latch for a little while and just tie it shut with a chain or a, probably a hay twine, knowing me, um, that will work. It's not really what I want to do, but if, if I have to, I will. I want to uh, gusset the bottom where it's going to weld up against the post. Even though we're dealing with, this is like half inch or, yeah, I think it is half inch flat bar. It's pretty heavy stuff, but there's going to be a lot of weight pressing on this and it's going to be pressing on it the weak way on this flat bar. So if I can get like a little triangle gusset underneath that, then I know that I never have to worry about this bending or sagging. Here again is where having my pile of junk scrap pieces has come in handy. I was able to find two triangular pieces here that can be used for gussets and they're almost exactly the same size. I'm just gonna clean them up, prep where the joints are or where they're gonna be and we can weld these things on. What I'm doing here is I'm beveling these edges where the weld is gonna be. Basically what that does is it makes a nice little valley for the weld to sit down in and it increases the amount of surface area that the weld has to adhere to. This results in a much flatter, nicer looking weld and one that's a lot stronger. Got my bottom piece all tacked together. Now it's just time to weld it up. The top hinge piece is going to be quite a bit different than the bottom and rather than try to explain to you what I'm going to do and then show you, I'm just going to show you.
It's starting to get kind of late today and I think that I've got everything welded on this gate that, that I need to weld. So at this point, I think it's ready to take out into the field and hang up and that's really what I need to get done today. So getting this gate loaded into my little trailer might be the hardest part of this whole job. I'm not exactly sure how much this thing weighs, but it's heavy. Well, I think I've got everything that I'm going to need over there, but I promise you I've forgotten something and I won't figure out what that is until we get over there and get started. I need to still grab a couple pieces of metal and I think that's it. I'm back over here at the ranch now and getting ready to hang this gate up. So the first thing that's going to have to happen, I've got to get this cross piece uh, between the two posts here because I'm going to use that piece to actually hang the gate up and make sure it's in the right spot before I weld the hinges on. Sorry, I haven't been able to talk very much, or maybe that's a good thing. Uh, with the generator going and everything going on, it's just been work, work, work. I'm kind of having second thoughts about my thought here to uh, put bolts in this top hinge piece, you know, which would, which would make this to where you could change the gate out and replace it if you had to. I always do that with my corral gates because, you know, in the corral, when you're pushing them or working them, I guess there's more of a chance that one might crash into a gate or try to jump one and damage it. But this gate out here, I just, I think the potential for that is really low. So I think what I'm going to do instead of drill the holes and do bolts, I'm just going to weld these sides here. If, if the day comes that I do need to take this gate off for whatever reason, these will be pretty easy to just cut these welds off and take this piece off of here. Um, but I think in the big picture, that's actually going to be easier than going to town, getting the right bolts. And, you know, if, if I do it this way, then I can just be done with it. On this top hinge piece, uh, I used a technique called the Z weave, which is you weld uphill and you just kind of go like in a Z pattern as you go up. Now, if you look at mine, it's not the prettiest in the world. There are people that can do this and make it look really nice. Mine, it, it's okay. But how it looks in this case is not the most important thing. The reason that I do a Z weave here is because it's a lot stronger than welding downhill. You'll get much better penetration, especially on this thicker metal and this top hinge piece is gonna have a lot of force pulling on it all the time. Um, even when the gate is latched, I'm not sure if the latch is gonna actually hold the gate up, 
So I think this weld right here will have stress on it for its entire life. So that's why I went with the Z-Weave. Um, if you're ever welding up a hinge, you, these are the kind of things that you got to keep in mind. Which way is the force going to be pulling on it? Like on the top, it's going to be pulling out. On the bottom, it's going to be pushing down. So that's why I made these two hinge pieces different. Well, with the hoist off of the gate, it didn't fall to the ground. So that means that at least for now, the welds are holding. Let's take this baby for a test run. The hinge is actually a little bit stiff. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't swing real freely i guess but that's actually a good thing i was hoping that that was going to be the case because with this gate oftentimes what i'll be doing with it is just having it open and i want it to stay there because probably <laughs> i'll be opening the gate and then running down to gather the cows and push them through here well it'd be nice to know that this gate's going to stay open so that when the cattle get here they actually have a gateway that they can walk through it's getting hot. I think it's like 90 degrees today, and we're not used to it yet. So it feels like you know 110. Um, but I got my gate hung up. That was the main thing I wanted to get done today. I was kind of hoping to get my other H brace welded, and I might come back out here later tonight and do that. But I think for now we're gonna call it right here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.